All right, guys, we are here. So month of June, we are doing different coming out stories for Pride. And I have with me Anna Trimer, who um, has, I've been kind of just like staring at all her photos on <laughs> Instagram because you're a photographer, right? Yeah. 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 Um, and you're from Minnesota? Yes. Yep. All right. Well, so we were chatting and she said, you know, I would love to chat with you about my coming out story and how I... Um, do the photography for a lot of uh, LGBTQ plus weddings and stuff like that. So I'm excited to hear your story. And why don't you tell us a little bit like about yourself and, you know, who you are, what you do right now. And then we can talk about um, your coming out story. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, I'm based in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I shoot a lot of queer elopements. Um, I do uh, like traditional weddings and stuff too, but I'm really passionate, passionate about serving the LGBTQ community just because I'm a part of it. And I know that, I don't know, sometimes those stories are a little less told. So yeah. So, cool. Yeah. yeah you, so you look really young. How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 24. Oh my God. So yeah, I was going to say a baby. I'm like, that's not fair. Um, that's just me projecting <laughs> onto you because my birthday's coming up and I'm turning, I'm old. So um, cool. So w- tell us a little bit, like, how did you get into um, doing the photography for like queer, what did you say? El- elopements? Yeah. Yeah. Which I mean, like elopements is kind of a weird word because I feel like it can mean whatever you want in a way. Um, I mean, a lot of times it does involve like hiking outside and exploring cool places, but it could also be like, you know, going to the courthouse or like, I don't know, getting married in like a roller rink or it's kind of just like doing things less traditional, which I feel like is often very fitting for LGBT. So the, the, what's your, uh, the, like, tell me more. I've, I've, I was like elopement. What do you mean? So people are like getting married just in non-traditional you know things and you're just there to you know document it all yeah yeah so um like two or three weeks ago um we have a national park here in minnesota and basically like i took the couple and like led them through this really cool hike and um they said their vows on top of like this really cool rock looking over a lake and then um I brought some like champagne and cupcakes and they had their own little party and yeah so that's it's cool. kind of just doing things differently yeah awesome I didn't even realize that that's pretty cool um so let's hear about you how does tell give, give a little bit about your coming out story yeah yeah oh gosh so um I realized like it was kind of one of those things by message you I like I was literally like at the gym and I was kind of just like, I was listening to your podcast and I was like, yeah, like, you know, just do it. And then I was talking to my partner and I was like, wait, I actually have never really like told this story. Like, what am I doing? Even better. (laughs) Even better. Um, Yeah. So hopefully it all makes sense. But um, yeah, I feel like to kind of like set the stage for the story. I give people a little bit of context. Um, my dad is a pastor. <laughs> so um, that I feel kind of is where it all starts because I was born and raised a pastor's kid. Um, and then, you know, just to add a little bit more scenery to the stage, I was homeschooled for the first half of my life. And then um, was moved into a private Christian school. Uh, so that's all to say that all of the messages I were getting were like very, if you're gay, you go to hell. Like it's wrong. It's, you know, not what the Bible says. Um, it, yeah, it was just very concentrated. And then um, fast forward a couple of years, I think I was in seventh grade um and my older brother came out as gay Mm. um and I guess when I say came out I should say forcibly removed from the closet because um my parents have been like 
reading his text messages and stuff. Um, I feel like that, and I feel like that was one of the things that I had kind of forgotten, honestly, about this part of my story because it's just like, it makes me so sad to look back at it because they forced him to tell me and my three other siblings. Um, so there's four of us. And I, yeah, I just remember like bawling my eyes out when he told us because in my mind, all that meant was, oh my gosh, she's going to hell. I'm never going to see him again. Like, mm. what does this mean? Um, but then I remember like later that night, like he's my best friend. Like we were homeschooled together for a while. So <laughs> like that really bonds people. And, um, I just remember being like, no, like you're my best friend. Like, I don't care. But, um, that was also really hard. My parents were at the same time, like telling me like, no, you need to, you need to really save him. Like you need to mm. be telling him about God. And, um, so I just felt like super trapped between like, I, I don't understand. Like he, he's my best friend. Like he's normal. Like nothing has changed. And also like, no, you need to like save him right now. How um, old was your brother at that time? So he was a sophomore in high school when he came out. And so they forced him to tell all of you guys, um, were you, how old were your other siblings? I want to say they were, I think, so I have an older brother, um, I have two older brothers, um, and the older of the two, I think he was like a senior in high school. And then my older sibling, um, they were maybe like a sophomore in college. Mm. So. so how did they feel about it when he came out? Um, so my, my older sibling, who is um, now also non-binary and part of the LGBTQ community, I think they were pretty much like yeah whatever like mm -hmm. um yeah so there's four of you are yeah. all four are all four part of the community or three of you just three of us yeah and then then the other one he's like the golden child like mm -hmm. in med school like so yeah. uh Pastor, <laughs> I, I'm intrigued to see how he feels about all this, but I'm going to continue on because I want to hear your how we got to yours. Oh, by the way, my brother is also, uh, my brother's gay. I have, there's three of us and two of the three, and then we have the golden child in the middle. Oh, okay, so you yeah. get it. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so my older brother and my dad, they were both just like, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of like a, sometimes like a, toxic man thing they don't know what to do so they just get angry and storm out and um that was pretty much how like what I watched then not from then on out was just my dad always being angry and really kind of just treating my brother super poorly um and then so then fast forward a couple years later um when I was a sophomore in high school um, it was a super tiny school. Like my whole class was 17 people. Mm -hmm. And um, we had this girl that was coming to join us for the year from another country. And I was like immediately like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I think we essentially were like flirting the whole year, but like not really like knowing it mm -hmm. um and then that same year there was a, a senior in my high school who was a lesbian and got a restraining order from the school because they found out that she was a lesbian so how do you legally get a restraining order for that I don't I don't know I think it was because she kissed one of the girls on the property so it may have had something to do with that 
Um, <laughs> That's what I didn't know how she was going to come out of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we obviously then kind of were like, okay, we got to like stop talking. Um, but then that summer, we kind of started seeing each other and that was when I first started like figuring it out. Um, but then she moved back to her home country and then I just kind of was like, oh my gosh, I can never do that again. Like, I don't want to go to hell either. I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. um, so, <laughs> so she goes home, you know, you're here left with this information, right? So what do you do next? How do you figure out that you're you're not going to hell? That like everything is okay actually after all. Yeah, so it was a it was a long process as I'm sure like it what it is for a lot of people. Um, basically, after that, I kind of went like the opposite direction. Was like, okay, I'm gonna try this whole you know like being with a guy thing. Maybe that'll make it go away. Oh my gosh, I'm the worst. <laughs> um, I feel that I did the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like, okay, maybe it's just this one. Let's try another one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like funny looking back because at the time I also was like, you know, very raised in like purity culture, like, you know, boys and girls don't touch that kind of thing. So I think I just thought it was that that I was like, no, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to touch them, but really I was just like not interested at right. all. That was like perfect for yeah. you. Cause you didn't have to, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that continued through, um, college. I, uh, yeah, I went to college and like remained in all these like super Christian groups and, I started getting really fixated on like the whole like homosexuality thing again, like trying to talk to people in these groups, like, is it actually wrong? Right. And I would always say, oh, it's because of my brother, you know, like I'm really worried about my brother, but I was trying to actually figure it out for myself too. Um, and I remember getting like book after book after book that was like, is God anti-gay? Like, what does God say about this? So it was just like, but I kept reading them and being like, no, I don't think that's true. Like, I, I just, it never made any sense to me. Um, and then, yeah, basically, I think it all really caught up with me and um it was just really hard to like watch my family like just really tear apart my older two siblings and I I couldn't keep us all together and I couldn't keep myself together um and ended up doing a stint of time in (laughs) a special place if you will um Mm -hmm. I was just at a very low point and I think um that was actually when I came out of that I think that was when I was like enough is enough and I'm not going to keep looking at like is it really wrong and instead kind of explore the opposite side of things like actually I'm sure there's people who say the very opposite um so let me ask you this are you still number one how are you still like super religious right now? No. No. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to ask you about your family in a minute, but just want to acknowledge like how hard that is. Like you're 24. So this wasn't that long ago. It's not like we're talking about like 20 years ago. You know what I mean? Like where I am uh, in the country. And also I came out literally 21 years ago, probably. Um, it was harder. And it, but like I didn't have that whole, you know, religious part as well like we were but we weren't that wasn't anything but like man that was what like six years ago or less yeah I didn't actually come out until last year wow and Um, that was just like a picture 
of me and my partner with the rainbow. So it wasn't even, you know, do with that what you will. <laughs> right. But like just the, I guess, I don't know any other word for it right now, but like turmoil that you felt as like a young person whose family, like you're torn between your siblings and then also what's going on with you and your parents. And like this such a environment that was created that one would think when it comes to religion, like love is when, you know, is supposed to be the center of that when it seems as if love was just ripped right out of it. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm, so, I'm First of all, I'm sorry that you have to go through that. And there are a lot of other people in the same situation. So thank you for sharing with us. Um, how is your relationship with your parents right now? Ooh, yeah, we're not speaking, <laughs> um, which is really unfortunate um, that they don't have a relationship with three out of four of their children. Um, they're just so convinced that they're right and that if they have relationship with us, then that means they're endorsing our lifestyle and yeah. So they would rather not talk to three of their four children and not support the people that they brought into this world and that God made them the way that you are. <laughs> I, I honestly, I feel really bad for them. Yeah. Yeah. And we, I think we, we've all tried at different points. Um, you know, I gave them some of the resources that I started reading that was like actual Christian authors saying like, actually the bible doesn't say that or like look at it from this perspective or i don't know they're just not interested so mm, they're not even interested in, in taking a look at it. yeah that's tough because you know they're so ingrained in what they learned and they want to be good or righteous or whatever when it, but so won't even look kind of reminds me I was talking this is so random but I was talking to my friend yesterday about North Korea and how they can only see what they are presented <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean and they're yeah. afraid to look anywhere else because you know that's wrong or whatever and it just makes me really sad um but so you you didn't so did you end up coming out to them or they just saw your post um yeah I came out to them like right before I shared um because I shared shortly after Christmas time and I remember coming out like right before Christmas um I th it was sort of like a solidarity thing with my older brother because he was like why why would I bring my boyfriend home to people that are just going to be mean to us the whole time um and so I basically you know told them the same thing and I spent Christmas with my, with my brother and his boyfriend. So yeah, they knew before I posted. Yeah. Um, it's, well, did you have a nice Christmas with your brother? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Good. I find that um, even just hearing people's coming out stories or even just living the past, you know, 20 plus years um, as gay, like just understanding that sometimes the, the family, family is created, you know, in our community, because a lot of people lose their family, and we find it in each other. I was lucky my family was, my mom took a little bit of time to come around, but my dad was like, it's okay, you know, and it did still take time to, to navigate, but like, I will bring all my friends home if they don't have somewhere to go, and like, you just get to create your own family, and that's okay, too, like, sometimes that's even better, you know? Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, and I feel super lucky that, um, I mean, I think a big part of my story too was actually like, like I know it might sound controversial because I think there is a lot of like benefit into, you know, obviously loving yourself and being good on your own, like fully endorse that, but also like finding a partner that was actually like, yeah, no, come as you are, like, like actual truly like unconditional love I think that that was kind of the last thing I needed to help me like accept myself and come out and her family accepts us as well which is really nice yes how long have you been with your partner about a year and a half cool awesome so 
um I, wow <laughs> i didn't realize how young you were <laughs> <laughs> it just blows my mind that and it doesn't like I for me it's I see online like people in Chris, Christianity and stuff like that will say certain things and I'm like it kind of it's a reminder like oh this is still a thing because it's not in my world you know even the people that are religious that I know and are so open and, and are like yeah man we're not those type of religious people like we believe that we were all born and you know so when I talk to people about it i'm like wow i can't believe that this is still really a thing <laughs> you know and actually um i spoke with uh i have if you listen to yesterday's podcast it's with did you listen yet yeah. it's yeah with um she is a christian uh lgbtq plus uh therapist right and so deals with that a lot as well and, and had a similar situation where her, at least her family accepted her but her she was really into the, the church and and they all just you know cut her off. And I'm like, man, that's insane. Like, I feel bad for those people who are missing out on such beautiful souls. And like, we're here on earth to connect and to, um, it really is like, love is the biggest thing. And so if it just blows my mind, like my whole life, I thought religion was about love and this and that, and it's, it's just not, you know, I think even the podcast and talking to different people are like helping me to explore that even more. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I think, I think it's something that I still don't necessarily have a lot of the answers to myself, because I think going on this journey, I've had to take a lot of steps back from religion. Like, I still believe in God, but it's, it is kind of like, I think humans really mess things up, you know, yes. humans are the ones that like, get things in their head and are like, nope, this is the way it's got to be. So a hundred percent. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. I call it Gus now, God, comma, universe, comma, source, comma, spirit, whatever. It's just something. It's an energy. Yeah. 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 No, you said that on, on your podcast and I really resonated. I was like, I like that. That fits me where I'm at right now. Cause yeah. Yeah. I often will say to people who because you know i have some followers online and there will be some that will say like something mean about whatever in god and i'll be like man i feel so bad for you when you go and if you have to go and meet your maker and i don't know if that's the thing but man if i was god at that point i would be so disappointed in you <laughs> you know yeah i know yeah I, I picture god just like hanging out with everyone you know, like I picture God, like our pride. <laughs> yes. You know, like just like fun. hugging and just, yeah, yeah. just accepting yeah. everybody and just love at the end of the day. Um, so man, how moving forward, are you excited for what's to come? Like what's going on? And tell me a little, like, I know you done a little bit of, um, you know, queer photography, but like that, that's what you're going for. Right. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's the thing is that it has been challenging, but I think just over this last year, um, I have really kind of just been like, how can I make this positive? And I think going through that experience has made me really passionate about working with the LGBTQ community because um, I understand what it's like to feel like you shouldn't be documented or like you can't be seen or your story doesn't deserve to be told and I also understand like yeah not everybody's family accepts them or wants to be at the wedding which is why some people want to elope because you know they have this really complicated relationship so I think even though it's hard, it, it puts me in this really cool position to be like hey I see you and like I want to share your story I'm interested in your story and I want to connect with you and make you feel loved, even though other people haven't made you feel that way. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm still working with a lot of different kinds of couples, but the goal is like one day, you know, be doing mostly, mostly LGBTQ weddings because, yeah, that's what I'm passionate about. I love that. Maybe one day you can do mine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so let me ask you, do you, let's... Uh, uh, on the regular podcast, like not regular, but this is Pride Month and I'm doing coming out stories. Normally at the end, I would say, 
you know, what would you tell your childhood self, like your 13 year old self or whatever? Um, for, for today, I'm going to ask maybe if there's another young girl out there who has a similar family, their pastor's kid or whatever, and is going through what you've gone through in the past, what, like 10 years, what is some advice or some words of comfort that you could share with them? Yeah, I think, um, probably I would say, you know, try to find ways to be at peace with yourself and, and really, you know, be okay with yourself. Um, so it is very possible that if you're in a similar situation that you may not be able to share pieces of yourself with other people or, um, it, yeah, it may be a risk, but if you can, you know, like it is okay to be you. And if, if you can come to a place where you feel at peace with that and, you know, just keep on making it until you can get out and be fully safe, then, you know, you are going to be so much better when you get out than if you try to fight yourself the whole way through. Does that mm. make sense? It a hundred percent makes sense to me because um, correct me or see if we're on the same page with this. Uh, I can remember because I knew since I was like young, young. And I remember that whole time, like not really being able to see past, like not knowing that once I got out, like, and not got out because I wasn't religious, but it's like out of my head and like shared that I would be accepted and loved and like have a great life. And like, for me, the other option was to go internal and hate myself and want to like, just the thinking the option was to end my life. Um, but there is so much love. And even if it's not your family, like, and you never know, sometimes your family comes around or is open and you just have no idea. But even if they don't, there is a whole community of people that are going to love you. You're going to find good people. You're going to be okay. And um, I know I'm not the be all end all, but you're not going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> you're not, <laughs> you're not. If anything, you'll be welcomed with open arms into stepping into who you truly are, were like, and being brave, you know, in doing that and just come from a place of love. Treat other yeah. people that way. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything that you'd like to share before we leave? Before we sign off? No, just, I mean, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for, for sharing the stories and for, yeah, for sharing your podcast. It's been, I feel like it was fate that I stumbled across your podcast and I hope that other people feel the same and can connect with the stories you share. I love that. Yeah. I'll tell you this coming out stories are making me uh, just hear a whole nother side of stories. And I'm like, I'm really loving that, like hearing what people uh, their own, their journeys with coming out and everything and stepping into who they are. So I thank you for sharing it. And for the first time, really, that's a big step. I know. I was like, wait, I don't even know what to say. Like, can I, yeah. So yeah. Thanks well, for it. you did great. And I'm, I'm uh, super grateful that you shared that because it's, um, it's a big one and it's an eye opener for me that like, this is still a thing, you know, sometimes you can get stuck in your own world of, my world is very open and free. And like I walk down the street and there's flags everywhere. And um, it's not like that everywhere. And I, I forget sometimes and it's a good reminder. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And hopefully we can, hopefully the world is still moving that way. Like I think it is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Especially if we <laughs> keep stepping up and sharing and, you know. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, well yeah. If I'm ever, I did drive by you last week. <laughs> I know like, we'll connect okay. at some point. I believe that for sure. I believe yeah. that. Sure. Well, yeah. thank you so much for your time and your story. I appreciate you. And uh, all right, we're going to sign off.